Senator Haggerty. Thank you, Chairman Coons and Secretary Blinken. Welcome. It's good to see you again. See you. A um, no, number of things to get through, Secretary, so I'm going to move pretty quickly. The first one I'd like to touch on. Um, this past year, Senator Cardin and I passed a law to create the Commission on Reform and Modernization of the Department of State via the 2023 NDAA. This new law authorizes the Commission to conduct a comprehensive review of the State Department and to offer specific legislative proposals for modernizing the Department. And funding the Commission will be one of my top SFOPS appropriations priorities this year. Secretary Blinken, if the committee includes an appropriation for the Commission on Reform and Modernization of the Department of State, do you commit to cooperating fully with this commission on all matters described in the underlying law that created it? In short, yes. Uh, and indeed, uh, one of the things I, I just say very quickly, Senator, is um, I think we've uh, been looking as well and talking to your team about recommendations mm -hmm. uh, for that, uh, and we uh, very much want to make sure that uh, we provide the support uh, Excellent. To, look, to do it. We look forward to working Thank with you on it, too. Uh, as, as Senator Rubio mentioned, we do face new and evolving challenges every day, and I think that modernization of the Department, I hope, will help us address those challenges. So thank you for that commitment. We'll turn to another area that um, is very troubling. Um, it's an issue related to our neighbor at our southern border. Uh, President Lopez Obrador continues to take arbitrary and punitive actions against U.S. businesses operating in Mexico. So my first question is whether you're aware of the Mexican military's recent seizure of U.S.-owned deepwater port that's on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Um, I'm not sure that I'm aware of that uh, particular seizure. When, when, and when did, this, uh, when did this happen? It's uh, just recently happened in the past few weeks. Ha happy to follow up with you. I, 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 I'd like to do that. Um, in, in that situation, it concerns me that the Mexican government's put its military in charge of constructing a section of the Tren Maya Railway that's near this recently seized port. And the bigger concern is the fact that China may be involved in building sections of that railway. Uh, the Chinese have bragged that the China Communications Construction Corporation is heavily involved in providing key materials for the railway. Uh, I, you probably are just aware- Just if I could ask, just as a point of information, uh, there is the, the case, and I'm not sure if this is the same one, of Vulcan Materials. That's, that's the that's, case. Yes, so I'm sorry, I didn't, um, I, I, I didn't associate. Yes, that, uh, that I am aware of, and share the, uh, share the concern about that. And we have been asking uh, the uh, Mexican authorities, um, local authorities, as well as uh, national authorities, about the military and uh, police presence there. Uh, so this is a deep concern. I think, um, as a practical matter as well, Cases like this can very negatively impact uh, Mexico's efforts to attract future um, investment from the United States yeah, or uh, any other countries. So yes, I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, no, I, I think th that's a, a grave concern, as you just described, that, that Mexico would take this sort of arbitrary and uh, very detrimental action against U.S. assets. I mean, the rule of law is critical to the relationship, and I am just shocked that President Lopez Obrador is operating in this manner. I think the even deeper shock, though, is, is the concern that, that uh, Chinese company is involved in building the section of the railway nearby. Mm -hmm. I also understand that um, the Chinese, this, this company that they're using is deeply involved in building Chinese military infrastructure. They're, they're, they're involved in militarizing the islands in the South China Sea that China has you know, poured concrete into the ocean and built. Um, I think the other thing I hope we can investigate is whether the Chinese are involved in financing this. Mm -hmm. but there are, are deep concerns there where you've got potentially Chinese companies working with the Mexican military to take adverse actions on U.S. assets, and, and in particular, uh, seizing a deep water port uh, in, in that location. I, I'd be interested in your opinion whether, whether this would be in the interest of the Chinese Communist Party to have control of this port. Uh, I think it, it uh, theoretically would be, and it would certainly not be in the interest of Mexico. One of the things that we've worked actively with Mexico on is making sure that in other areas, for example, in, in, in the telecom sector, mm -hmm. uh, that they focus on uh, making sure they have trusted vendors uh, engaged in their system because we know the challenges to their own sovereignty mm -hmm. uh, when you don't have a trusted vendor uh, in your deep, telecom deep, system. Deep and this is something I must say that President Lopez Obrador has seemed seized with, but I'd welcome, first of all, making sure we have all the information that you have about this particular mm -hmm. case and sharing with your, your team what we know. Uh, we'll, we'll exchange information, as, and we may, may even have an opportunity to discuss it further this afternoon in the SFRC. Um, I'd like to turn to another area, uh, and that again relates to, to China and, and the situation with Taiwan. Um, in 2023, this year, February, uh, CIA Director Burns said that as a matter of assessment, 
China seeks to be capable of conducting an invasion by 2027, if so ordered. Do you agree with Director Byrne's assessment? Uh, I, I, I agree with his assessment, yes. The um, time is not on our side, Secretary, especially when we have a $19 billion arms backlog to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. That's why I was proud to contribute to and vote for the Taiwan Enhancement Resilience Act, TERA, the Security Assistance Authorization Law that Senators Bob Menendez and Jim Risch passed into law via the 2023 NDAA. The bipartisan Menendez Law annually authorizes as much as $2 billion in grants of foreign, foreign military financing to Taiwan between now and 2027. I was deeply disappointed, however, to see that the President's proposed budget this year included only $113 million in new FMF uh, lines for emergency foreign policy priorities, far short of the $2 billion target. Of this $113 million, the President's proposed budget assumes a mere $16 million as a baseline for foreign military financing in the Indo-Pacific. So my question, Secretary, is why did the State Department's budget request for foreign military financing exclude funding for this bipartisan law? Um, well, Senator, as you point out, we do have, uh, as part of our request, the uh, Emerging Priorities Fund globally, which, as you rightly said, is about $113 million in the budget. When it comes to Taiwan, uh, you know, FMF is one, one tool. We appreciate the authority. We also appreciate the, the drawdown authority, which we're mm -hmm. looking at. But um, we have looked at um, how we can be most effective in supporting uh, Taiwan and its defense. Um, as you know, the State Department has notified uh, just over the past um, a decade or so, nearly $40 billion in foreign military sales uh, to Taiwan, uh, going back to just between 2019 and today, it's been about $21 billion. I have signed out um, more um, cases than any Secretary of State uh, in history for, uh, for Taiwan. Taiwan also increased its own defense budget by 11%, yep. giving it the um, additional means to buy uh, equipment necessary for, uh, for its defense. Back, back to the original question, yeah. Mr. Secretary, I'm sorry the time is so tight, but, but to the original question, um, the budget is far short of what you've been authorized. My question now is whether the PRC has said to you or to anybody that works at the State Department, any of our diplomats, that there is some sort of red line involved with us stepping up our foreign military finance. Uh, no, and to the extent they've ever tried to say anything like, uh, like that, uh, that's not something that uh, we would obviously take uh, into account, uh, as I said. I signed out more uh, cases than any previous Secretary of State. The challenge that we have, as uh, I think you've pointed to, is we do have a backlog, a very significant backlog that's built up. This fundamentally goes to production challenges that, uh, that we have. I know that we're working on, um, on, a, uh, on a bipartisan basis, working with industry to build up that uh, production capacity. Um, that is the long pole in the tent, and we need to address it. I, I'm very familiar with the foreign military sales yeah. process, and uh, I would just say this. We learned our we had an opportunity for deterrence with Ukraine. We didn't take it. We have the opportunity here. The Menendez law actually is aimed at providing that opportunity to create deterrence there that could be significant. I encourage and look forward to working with you to do everything we can in that regard. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman.